the pick for you, DeAndre. What were the most important things in your in your decision to come here? Um, competitive roster that Rabel and, and Rand have built. Uh, I want to be able to compete. Obviously, you know, it starts with the division, and then after that, the rest speaks for itself. You'd mentioned uh, the relationship that uh, Brable's kind of maintained over the years. How much does that mean? I mean, you know, you've been in Houston, he comes here, you go to Arizona. When you have that kind of connection with a coach, how much can that maybe help uh, with just the familiarity when you're changing situations? Oh, that helps a lot, especially someone in my situation going to year 11. Uh, I wanted to be somewhere around people that I'm comfortable with. Uh, Rabel and I, you know, we've always kept communication over the years. Uh, when I was, first got to Arizona, he was one of the first coaches to congratulate me and was one of the first coaches to criticize a, a bad game that I had as well that wasn't my coach, and that's what I respect about uh, Rabel. Texted you to talk about that again? Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. what the criticism was? Uh, he asked me why I didn't catch a ball that I should have caught. <laughs> Was that your first reaction? You appreciated it, or did it take a while to? Work? No, I appreciate that right away because that's how he was in Houston with me. You, at 31 years old, what is it about your game that you feel will allow you to continue to play at a high level? Uh, my IQ, um, the way I play the game, the the pace I play the game, obviously, um, the way I started last season as well. Uh, you know, my first couple games in, in Arizona. Started to use any like different training as you you know matured. Yeah, matured? absolutely, I have. Uh, I really last year was the first year uh, that I, I kind of started a certain kind of training at Exos Speed Training with this guy named Nick. Um, I never ran track, so it was my first really track experience and uh, in, in, in speed training. And this was the first off season I would say I had a full off season to to kind of go out and do that kind of training. Into the Titans playbook in these last couple of weeks, and how similar is it to what you guys did in Houston? Well, I haven't been able to, you know, dive too deep that I just signed. <laughs> Obviously, you still want to be a very productive player in your own right, but when you look at the other guys in the receiver room, you see guys like Burks and Phillips and McMath who don't have a, a, a big history of production, they're still young guys. How do you approach that? Uh, I approached that as a challenge to help those guys, uh, obviously. You know, I had a, someone like Andre Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, you know, kind of showed me the way. So I, I, I approach it as a challenge to help those guys get to where they want to get to. And uh, obviously, it's, uh, it's about the team. So, you know, whatever I can do to help those guys on and off the field, that's what I'll do. Do you give any consideration? Off the top, you mentioned um, how Mike and Rand have assembled a competitive team, but on the outside, a lot of people will say this, this off, specifically the offense doesn't look competitive. What makes you confident that this is an offense that can uh, play at a high level? Uh, I remember watching last year's game when Josh Dobbs came in and they almost won the game. So, uh, you know, that right there, you know, woke my eyes up to, um, you know, how these guys play uh, and, and, and the pace they play at. And, how competitive they can be, uh, you know, with the right people on the team. And, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys seen the same game that I've seen. You know, they were in a lot of games. And before a lot of people got hurt, I've always kept up with, with Vrabel and the Titans. And Derrick Henry's one of my friends, so I try to watch all the games that he's played. So I think last year when Josh came in and those guys were, were very close to, you know, still still winning, that right there uh, kind of woke my eyes up to see that they're only a couple pieces away from where they want to be. Like from, from having worked with him and, and how much you think you can pick up on, on where he left off in 2019? Uh, I think we can we can leave off on, uh, you know, kind of, you know, well, I think we can start uh, where we left off. Uh, obviously, Tim, you know, he wasn't uh, calling a lot of plays when I was there, but he was still somewhat part of the offense. And Tim knows my, he knows me, he knows where I play. I know Tim uh, very well. I remember when he was, you know, just a GM uh, running errands. And, you know, he's, he's he's came a long way, put a lot of work in, and he's very passionate about what he do, and so am I. Do you have much of a relationship with, with Charles London, uh, DeAndre? Do you have much of a relationship with Charles London while you're in Houston, and, and might that help since he's a passing game? Yeah, I did. Uh, all those guys here that were in Houston, uh, you know, have a relationship with, with, with all of them. Um, love Charles. Um, you know, great coach and, you know, just a great person in general as well. Tim put you in the slot a lot more than you had been before. How much of that 
open up your game even in, in, in new ways and how much you're looking forward to, to, to that kind of game here? Uh, from what I remember, I think when I was in the slot, you know, I've, you know, you can go back and fact check me, but I might have been, you know, like top five productive slot receiver at the time. Uh, and that was my first year being in the slot. So obviously Tim uh, knew how to call plays and, um, you know, it worked. We were very productive. You know, we were, you know, a couple games away from getting to where we wanted to get to. So I think that helps a lot, not just having me outside where teams can kind of, you know, double me or just, you know, take me out the game in one position, but move me around, not just, you know, don't, it doesn't help myself, but the offense as well. You've so many quarterbacks in, in your career. What has been the key for you in being able to develop that relationship with them that you need to have to be productive? Uh, off the field, not just on the field. You know, speaking to those guys, hanging out with them, doing the little things. I play with, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, and that's one thing that I realized that helps. Extra communication, doing doing the little things that you don't see on on the practice field, and going over things in in the film room, trying to be perfect. All quarterbacks are different, but uh, at, at, at the same time, you know, they're they're very similar. So you know, just trying to find certain things that they like and being on the same page with them. What was your visit with Ryan like in that regard uh, when you came in and uh, how, how much are you looking forward to working with him? Uh, Ryan came, him, him and his wife, they came and uh, you know met me and Ryan when we were out. So that, that said a lot about him right there. Uh, you know, just wanting to come in and, and talk to me, hang out with me. Uh, we kicked it off right away. Tweet DeAndre about the, the haters and the, and the doubters and so forth. Do you, do you carry a little motivation in here? Uh, you know, about people who, who might think you're, you're getting up in years, that, that kind of thing? Um, no, nah, not really. I really don't pay too much attention to those people. Uh, you know, people who doubt and uh, are negative. Of course, you know, you're going to have those, uh, you know, those those quotes and comments, or especially when you don't go to the organization that, that most of those people are coming from. What's your level of belief with Tannehill as the quarterback that, that he can lead this team and you to winning? Uh, what do I believe? Your level of belief that he can lead the team to win. Uh, one out of ten, I think it's a ten. What do you think of him as a quarterback? I think he's a great quarterback. What's been your key to sustained success over the ten years, Deion? You got more catches than anyone in the league in the last ten years. Ooh, if I could, you know, that's, that's a lot. But I would say um, being on the same page with my quarterback. I can't go out and, and throw the ball to myself. Being patient, not having the ego, putting in the extra work. As much as people say, uh, you know, I don't practice. I don't think you can have those kind of numbers without practicing. So uh, it's doing not just, you know, the things you guys see, uh, but also, like I said, outside of the football field, being on the same page and being reliable. When you were uh, here a month ago visiting with everyone, when you left those meetings, did you kind of figure that this would be a place you'd wind up? Or, or where were you standing in your mind when you left here a month ago? Uh, felt great. Rand did a great job. Uh, very well as well. Showing me around, showing me the facilities, showing me how they do things here. And I felt good about leaving. And uh, obviously, that has something to do with my decision as well. You and JJ, a couple of years ago, posted some pictures of yourselves in those Oilers uniforms and talked about how sweet they were. <laughs> People in Houston really struggling with, with them being rolled out now. How much you like them, and, and do you understand people down there struggling with the idea of this team wearing them? Uh, do I understand it? Uh, I'm not from Houston. I'm from South Carolina, so I really don't understand much about that. Uh, I just go out and you know do what I'm supposed to do, and that's play football. You know, how, good, how, good gonna, how good you gonna look in that? How good? Uh, hopefully we win in it. I think we will. So uh, you know, I think that that's going to help uh, wearing those jerseys. It'll look better if we win. You've been through this problem. Excuse ahead, me, what, what are you saying? Did you have a question? No, you go ahead, Joe. You mentioned your relationship with Derrick Henry earlier. How would you kind of describe that relationship? And also, how much did he maybe play a factor in you coming here? Uh, Derrick played a big factor in me coming here. I always wanted to be part of an offense that had a great run game. I know that helps my job, and I know it's going to help his job having someone like me out there. I think, uh, obviously, I played with Arian Foster. I played with some great running backs, but Derrick Henry is – Definitely by far one of the best running backs that uh, I would be able to have a chance to play with. And I think that not just help us, but the team as well. So, you know, Derrick Henry being here played a very big part of me coming here. The value of running backs is 
something that seems to be in dispute here as of late. How important are they from your standpoint as somebody who's obviously operating a high level of passing uh, you know, Without a great running back, or without a good running back, I shall say, uh, you know, the, the pass game is, is, is very hard to, you know, to establish. Play a lot of football, you got to establish the run first. I think those guys are very important to the game of football. And obviously, I see what's going on. Not a fan of it. But, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's out of my decision. The only thing I can go out there and do is, uh, you know, my job. But having a good running back on the team, it definitely helps, uh, you know, win games for sure. Like in joining a new team, learning new teammates, coaches, the city, the playbook, and how you feel now, just a day or so in. Uh, I feel great. I feel like I've already been here. A lot of these guys on the team made me feel very comfortable, uh, you know, and embraced me. So uh, having this be, you know, the third team I'm on is, is you know, it's, it's normal. It's part of the game. It's part of the job. Uh, you know, so I tell a lot of young guys, you know, never get settled in one place or, you know, feel like this is the only place, but, you know, be ready to move. And, uh, you know, you got you to gotta adjust. It's, it's the game of football. Going into it at year 11, given what you've accomplished, what's driving you now as you join a third team? Uh, the same drive I always had coming from where I come from, you know, coming from poverty, man, you know. That's, you know, it's, it's a drive that, you, that sticks with you no matter where you go in life, no matter what job you have. You said something you made a crack there about not practicing. Is that overblown? Do you take veterans' days off just like uh, yeah, Of course, that's, that's overblown. I think that started uh, in Houston, you know, when they were trying to, you know, uh, you know, you know, whatever. But, uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trey Lynn talked to him about you being the guy he watched growing up. How, how much can you show him and, and have you been a teacher player in your career? Oh, of course. I think uh, if you guys go back and see uh, how productive Will Fuller was when, when he came to Houston uh, and other receivers as well. Uh, you know, Arizona, I think, uh, you know, the same for some of those young receivers who came there. Uh, you know, I helped those guys out a lot, make their job easier, obviously. You know, me being who I am and defense is focusing on me. Uh, I think that helps not just myself, but tight ends as well. So, uh, Traylon is, is a guy, obviously, I think he has a lot of potential, and I think he's going to show that this year. When you came on your visit here, uh, a lot of Titans fans liked your post when you said Nashville's a vibe. So, uh, why is Nashville a vibe? Why do you like this city? Did I post it? Yeah. <laughs> Instagram. I did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other guy said, he said he was, it was a vibe. Uh, somebody was, said it was oh, a vibe. Oh, no, I never yeah. said that. But uh, now Nashville is a good place, though, man. I love Nashville ever since I uh, came here. My first visit coming here was when I was in college. Um, Jamie Harper was the running back, and he uh, he invited a couple fellow of his fellow teammates from Clemson here and showed us around. And uh, I thought Nashville was a cool city then. And, uh, you know, full circle, I'm here now. But I, I've always respected the city of Nashville and the Titans uh, organization. You guys, uh, you guys go hard. I love playing against them when I was in Houston and Arizona. And, um, you know, definitely love seeing the Clemson jerseys every time I've came here as well. So uh, I feel like Nashville has, has supported me, uh, not just, you know, the Titans fans, but, you know, the city in general. What took you so long to make your decision from the time of the visits to when you actually decided to come here? Uh, what took me so long? I didn't know I took a long time. <laughs> I thought I was... Here on the radio, uh, so man, it's, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you know, as my mom says, it's God's time, you know. Um, so I think it was perfect timing. Got to ask you real quick, the hats, the outfits, where did you develop that sense of, of fashion? Um, I would probably say my mom dressing my brother and not the same and me wanting to be different when I was young. <laughs> nah, so uh, yeah, probably that, honestly. I just wanted to be different than my brother. Do you plan on continuing your charity work that you've done in Houston and Arizona here in Nashville? And if so, what uh, type of charity work? Of course. Uh, my mom and I, we have a domestic violence organization called Smooth with three O's uh, and you know we're, right now we're working on getting that certified here in Tennessee uh, so that's that's what we do and not just you know what you guys see publicly but grassroots things as well that's not on the news. Mike said you'll have a couple excused absences here at the start of the camp I guess that was pre-planned how much do you have to balance you know doing you and making sure you're right and getting set with the new team here as you get started in training camp? 
Uh, that's, that's part of it. That's part of uh, going to a new organization, uh, you know, moving things and uh, having kids as well. So, uh, you know, I respect it very well, uh, you know, how, how he's handled that and uh, allowing me to, you know, take personal leave to, to handle some family things. And uh, that's, you know, that's, that's who Vrabel is. And uh, no, that's part of the decision why I came here, you know, him being a, a family man and understanding certain things uh, in life uh, and not just looking at me as a football player. Thank you. Now that you've added DeAndre to this roster, how much uh, and what do you hope that he can bring, not just to this team, but to this offense? Well, obviously, uh, it's a proven player. It's a proven player that's had production um, year after year. Uh, the veteran presence that's seen a lot of different defenses. He's got uh, experience in our offense. Some of the system, you know, it's going to have changed a little bit, but I would say that he's got some familiarity with it. Um, some familiarity with with me, with Timmy, and, you know, and some of our coaches. So, you know, going to ask him to do the same thing that we ask everybody else to do. Um, which is to, you know, come in, be attentive, you know, work hard, you know, help the team in, in multiple ways, um, and, and I'm confident he'll do that. I, I would tell you this, that, you know, when we signed him, uh, he mentioned that, you know, he wanted to communicate that he had, you know, a prior engagement that, that he'll be taken care of um, here in the next couple of days. So, you know, I would say that there may be a day or two that he won't be here, not to alarm anybody, but, you know, Appreciate him, you know, letting us know that on the onset, you know, as, and when we signed him. So, you know, we do that with with all of our players that, that communicate that things that come up. But you mentioned the familiarity, <clears throat> having worked with him in Houston and also Coach Kelly as well. How much did it help that you knew not only what he could do on the field, but the type of player he was in the locker room, the practice field, and his work ethic all together? Well, that always helps in free agency. I think we've we've talked about this in the past. Is you know trying to have some working knowledge of the player, whether that's in a position coach, a, a general manager, or someone in the personnel department, you know, myself, I, th I think that that's in, in, important you know, as you bring players onto this team, as you bring people into this building. Um, so, you know, I think that's always gonna be a positive. Mike, how has this game sort of progress from the time that you were with him in Houston to now? Well, I think he's just been able to see, you know, there's some routes I would say that, that with Hop and a lot of, you know, veteran receivers that maybe don't necessarily look uh, like they do in, in the playbook, but that's basic, that's dependent on the coverage or the look. Um, you know, he's always, you know, when I've been around him, he's always developed a strong relationship with the quarterback. There's a you know, big trust factor there. So, you know, that'll have to get built, um, but, you know, He's strong with the football, contested catches. We know how many of those there are in this league. Um, you know, so those are things that we'll have to, you know, continue to, to work on and continue to make a strength of his. How much do you think having a veteran like that to set the example for a guy like Traylon Burks, like how much do you think that will help? Well, I, I think that that's always a positive. I think he's been he's had energy since he's been here, since he signed. You know, coming in yesterday, being here today, conditioning test, did a fantastic job. Those guys all ran hard uh, and, and did a nice job. So, um, you know, we're extremely excited about trailing and, and who he's going to be, you know, going into his second year. Uh, but you have to go put the work in and, and hopefully, um, whether that's DeAndre, whether that's me, Rob, and then trailing, it's up to trailing to, you know, to ultimately take that next step and, and, and continue to help us and, and be dynamic player that, that we hope him to be. you figure it changes coverage for Traylon some? Uh, I think that we'll see some, you know, we'll have to see where things go. You know, I think that, uh, you know, not having been, you know, DeAndre here um, with us, we'll see how things go, you know, where, where you know, we'll, we'll be ready for multiple things. And, and I know that, you know, whether that's on third down or getting different looks um, and coverages, um, but I but I can't tell you exactly you know what the other team's going to play. We'll just have to be ready and you know be able to move people around um, to where we see is best going to help them. Whether it's Kyle, Chig, and you know anybody else. Who do you anticipate uh, being in the running to be this team's opening day right tackle? Uh, well, Jamarco's worked over there the first couple of days. You know the early report guys. Um, 
I think Andrew Ruptrick will play play over there. I think Jalen uh, will have a shot over there. I think uh, OJ will have a chance over there, John. And so, you know, we'll we'll kind of see where things go, um, and, and we'll find the best best person there. Pretty much locked in at guard, at least for right now. I would say for right now. I mean, it's. I mean, I'm not. You know, going to get out in front of it too much, but I. You know, I kind of like where he's at right now and, and what that looks like, you know, inside. Um, but I wouldn't say that that would be off the table. That's just not what we're going to do, you know, tomorrow when you're at practice. So, but I, I, I think that hit that that could be a possibility potentially. Um, but I, I just look at some of these guys over the spring and, you know, Peter was the guy that, you know, improved throughout the spring. Um, and... Uh, you know, want, want to continue that improvement, but it, he could potentially be out there as well. Yeah, I mean, he's still a young player, obviously, mm -hmm. and he can be out there with you in training camp. How do you balance continue working him, trying to get him ready when he's able? Well, we only him? have so many linemen, so he'll have to practice. It's just which group uh, he practices with, and, and we'll talk to Nick about that. And, you know, he'll, he'll get plenty of work. I'm not worried about Nick um, working. Came back in, in fantastic shape, looks really good, and um, you know we'll we'll make sure that he's getting plenty of work. Uh, that that won't be a problem. That policy is pretty straightforward. People around the league have had problems with it. What kind of conversation did you have with Nick about what went wrong for him? Well, I think we're all conscious of of continuing to make the the education and the decisions that we make. Uh, we're all responsible. Myself, the team, Nick, the players' association. Everybody, we're, we're all responsible for continuing to educate our players on the gambling policy, the personal conduct policy. Um, you know, we're held to a high standard uh, being in this league and, and being a part of it. So you know, we'll continue to do those things and, and have to make great decisions. Mike, you mentioned uh, being responsible, Hassan Haskins mm -hmm. and that incident. Uh, <laughs> how do you handle that at this moment or you just let the legal process handle that, uh, continue? Well, one, I think we're, we're very sensitive uh, to those incidents, uh, we want to be, uh, but we also want to be smart. We also want to, you know, provide for um, all the all the facts and all the information that we possibly can get, and the legal process. Um, but we we treat those very seriously, and, and those are sensitive matters. Uh, so we want to make great decisions, and but we also want to, you know, give give Hassan and, and everybody uh, some some due process and, and allow for all the facts to come out. To, to have that hovering over a guy while he's out working? Um, I don't know if awkward uh, is is the right word. I think that it's, um, you know, you spend a lot of time with these guys and then there's a there's a certain level of trust that, that you try to build um, over the course of time. And uh, I, I wouldn't say that, that awkward is, is it. And I'll be... Um, you know, we'll all make a, the, the right decision uh, at, at the correct time, but right now is not the time to do that. How is it structured? I guess the training camp schedule mm -hmm. relates to practice on the field time, meeting, walkthroughs, uh, compared to maybe years past. So we always try to do this two-on, one-off uh, model where, where you'll work for two days and there'll be a high volume. You know, we track the volume like everybody else does. And when I say one-off, it would be – you know, try to do it as a jog through uh, last year. And then we looked at the numbers and it really didn't do anything. So I, I had to, you know, adjust that last year. And so we'll start that out right now. We're just making it a walk through, but you have to stay on your installation schedule, right? The players get a day off, you know, once every seven days. Uh, and so when I say off, I just mean off from full speed or, or what it looks like. So it'll be a, a, a walk through, you know, we'll have two walk throughs on those days. Normally we'd have an evening uh, walkthrough after a normal practice day. So I, I like the schedule. I think the players like it. We, we try to get them out of here at a reasonable time to, to get rest and to recover, which is critical. But, you know, the, the afternoon meetings can, can provide for review of the film, but also installation for the next day. And then you walk through that stuff at night. And then again, you have a quick meeting in the morning. So 
I think the, the, those every third day will be, you know, a walkthrough that so we can maintain our installation schedule as we work through training camp, first, second down, third down, red zone, uh, two minute, you know, short yardage, our goal line, everything that goes in. Uh, and so hopefully within the first, you know, eight to 10 days, we'll have everything in and, you know, ready to go. What are those Camp tomorrow. What is the most important thing you're looking for over these next couple days? I'm just trying to continue. You know, we look. We talk about training camp as, you know, trying to accomplish three things. We're trying to build and our our foundation, you know, of what our culture is and who we are and how we want to play, and we want to try to make sure that we're developing a team, that there's a that there's a level of camaraderie and trust and accountability that we all have for each other, and the last one is we have to most importantly prepare to win. Like that, that's what we're all here for. So that, that's going to be, that was my message the other day. That'll be my message this afternoon. You know, as we have to build a foundation, you start over. If there was improvement in spring, great. We need to continue that. But it's the found, building a foundation, you know, developing a team, and then preparing to win. And then the players will obviously define their role as we work our way through training camp. And Hopkins, how do you go about, like, do you sit down with him and develop with, with DeAndre Hopkins? Do you sit down with him and develop a practice plan, or, or how, like, how do you go about managing his reps and everything? Well, they'll, everybody, you know, you guys have heard this ad nauseum, but everybody has a plan every day, uh, and everybody will be working in some capacity, right? Whether, whether that's Derek or Jeff or KB, whoever that DeAndre, um, and, and so I don't, I'm not ready just to say this is what the plan is. I think it's dependent on, you know, what it looks like, the amount of work that he that he gets, and and the amount of work that that he needs, and the conditioning that he needs, and the relationship with the quarterback, and you know, but we're obviously he's going to have a have a plan just like everybody else. Is he at that stage of his career, unlike the practice every day during the course of things in the long run. All right, one more time, Paul. Is he a guy that's likely to not be a? Every yeah, day I'm sure practice? that there will be days where that he's not out there. You, you know, what I mean, like I'm not, you know. I'm not going to say he's going to be at every practice. I'm not – I mean, there's other guys that will be in that same vein. He may do team periods. And, you know, there were times where, you know, Ben Jones or Jeff Simmons, you know, came out and, and did uh, did team periods or came out or, and did, you know, individual work and didn't do the team periods. There's, every day is something different. There's a plan that we go through each and every day with, with myself, with Frank, with Todd, um, communication with the players. So we're, we're going to do it just like we've done it before. His physical obviously is not on the pup list. How, how much do you anticipate him being able to do in camp? Uh, uh, again, we'll, we'll see how he feels. We'll see how he responds each day to the work. I know that from what I've seen, he, he looks like he's ready to go. But I'm sure Harold will be one of those guys that you know, may, or may not be out there every day. He may just need some individual work, may need some third down work. and Just again, just try to apply it to – to building our foundation, you know, making sure that we're developing a team and then obviously preparing to win, and that's all part of it. How nervous are you with the offensive line depth given Nick's suspension and where this team stands with the offensive line? Um, I'm not nervous, you know what I mean? But we have to be um, better. We have to be better up front. And, um, you know, we got to protect our quarterback. That's what that's what happens in this league. When your quarterback gets hit, they, they turn the ball over, they get hurt. So I'm not nervous. I'm excited to see guys compete. I'm excited to see guys, you know, develop um, a role and a position and, and versatility, uh, see who can can play more than one position, see who can withstand, withstand the rigors of um, training camp approach. It's a long season and Certainly durability and you know, availability is critical. We talk to the players about availability when they're available. One, the most important thing is they can, they can get better. Uh, two, they can determine a, they get an opportunity when other guys aren't out there. And then the third one is it allows them to be evaluated. So those are the things that I tell the team. I told the young guys a couple days ago. I tell the older guys that same thing today. Mike in his workout and where do things stand in, in that regard? Yeah, both, both, you know, we had Chris and, and Fan in. We had Hubbard and Fan in for the workout, and, you know, nothing new to report there with the signing. With DeAndre, you've added an all star player to your roster, and this is a big ad for your football team. How was it you were able to stay so confident that you were able to, that you were going to get him, that you were able to slow play an all star? 
most important thing is that we want players that want to be here. And started with that, explained that to DeAndre, and I said, if that's the case and if you want to be here, then things will work out. You know, the, the, the contractual side of it will work out and we'll figure things out. Um, but if you don't and you want to be somewhere else, then don't waste our time, don't waste your time or anybody else's time. And so stayed in contact throughout the, the process and, you know, I'm excited that he's here and we're, we're all moving forward. Or show to you that he wanted to be here. He's here, Jared. That's that's really all I could tell you, man. I've had a relationship with DeAndre uh, since I was a coach in Houston, and have tried to maintain that relationship with him and other players. And um, you know, at the end of the day, we were able to get a deal done. So he's getting he's ready to get to work. Season as he did with DeAndre, is there a challenge to fitting him into the scheme you guys have developed, or is that familiarity kind of? Yeah, I think the familiarity and also you know just being a uh, instinctive football player and 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 again seeing a lot of coverages. You know, he's running a lot of routes versus a lot of different coverages, and um, you know he can also explain them to other receivers like, hey, this is what I look for when I'm you know breaking a route off or or trying to to determine which way to go. You know, if it's an option route or you have the choice and he can say, well, this is what I look at when I make the choice or, um, you know, so I don't think that it'll be an issue, you know, but again, you got to put the time in, you got to put the effort in, you got to put the work in. What's your opinion on the value of the running back in the NFL? I, I love the running backs that we have here. Um, you know, again, everybody's under contract that's here and, uh, and we've, we've done really good things with Derek and excited about Tajay and Hassan and Julius and, and Jonathan. So, you know, everybody's under contract. Do you think like Caleb Farley can put himself in position to play meaningful defensive snaps for this football team? Well, he's on PUP right now, so he's working to get back. And, and when that changes, we'll, we'll let you know. But right now he's, he's, un, he's on physically unable to perform, which uh, him and Dylan also are. And, you know, we got the roster where Josh is on uh, NFI. So, whenever he comes off PUP, and then allow him to be a, to improve, to to be to take advantage of the opportunity, and then be evaluated. What do you see from the, Kevin Mitchell. What do from the quarterbacks on the roster so far, and maybe how tough is it to make sure everybody gets their work during camp, preseason games, joint practice? Yeah, I think that we're conscious of that. Again, I thought uh, Malik came out of the spring with with glaring improvement. You know, Will's learning, you know, what what it goes into being an NFL quarterback. Uh, and then certainly the consistency that, that Ryan showed uh, in the offseason and his uh, willingness to, to pick up new terminology with the offense and some of the stuff that we were doing. So, again, feel good about where we're at. Um, can't have too many quarterbacks. Hopefully they're, they're all good ones and that we have tough decisions. But... Uh, you know, it was fun just seeing the guys improve and then seeing where we go now starting tomorrow. How do you feel about Levis's mechanics and his ability to layer the football? And, and have you seen a little bit of change in that through the offseason? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that that showed up throughout the, the offseason. Some of those those routes where you have to kind of throw it out in front of somebody or in zone coverage, you have to be able to, to put the ball um, over defenders into a spot. And I thought that there was evidence of that. Um, you know, there was a throw the other day that that was evidence of that, where you know maybe had to to, to put some some touch on it. Um, and, and again, Will's a, a big, strong kid that's going to continue to improve and see defenses and recognition and where to go with the football and and when he has to throw at different speeds and different arm angles. You'll run skills similar to that with Peter, like a player that has experience on the outside, but you're not really interested in moving him outside right now. Well, I wouldn't. It's not going to be the first group of options, but certainly would be the versatility uh, that Daniel has shown over the course of his career is something that's you know, intriguing. But you know, I, we're, we're trying to, to to solidify something. We're going to try this, and then if again if it doesn't work, you know, we're going to have to try something else. DeAndre's caliber at a position of need. Is that something you kind of had in mind and Rand had in mind for the position when you guys stayed a little more patient in free agency in the draft prior? Um, I mean, nobody can predict the future, but 
you know, you're always, you know, looking for ways. There's multiple ways to, to add players to the roster and they become available at different times. And you're always trying to predict sometimes who may become available. Uh, our, our personnel department will continue to do that through training camp and they'll watch the preseason games and, and potentially have a group of players that, that may, you know, be available uh, with waiver claims, well, that'll be the next process, and we'll continue to look at, you know, the the free agents that are available through training camp if we need guys. How much time do you have <coughs> to be able to evaluate who can play where on the line, given the lack of padded practices and how the, the training camps just aren't as physical as they used to be? Well, I think we have plenty of opportunities. The other thing is, is, is great teams, every really good team that I've been a part of knows how to practice. Uh, without pads and and with speed so you could still rush the quarterback you could still pass protect and, and maybe the run game doesn't look like it's going to look but um, I, I think we have ample opportunity uh, to, to be able to identify that Mike every year you've been here before now it's really felt like the offseason was building on what you were able to accomplish the year before obviously with the way last year ended have you had to do kind of a reset within the building? Do you, how do you approach it from a mental aspect coming back to this? Well, I think if you believe, if you have a foundation and, and there's things that you believe in that you know work, um, you, you don't make a bunch of changes. There were obviously changes that things that you know happen, whether that's with with players or with some of the coaching staff. Um, but but I, I believe in you know the foundation that we have here, so I don't think that there's going to be a change in you know, my daily approach or the things that I do or how I try to lead the football team or, or prepare them, you know, we, what we do starting tomorrow, you know, last year is not going to have any bearing on, on our ability to, to prepare and, and, and try to practice. With Hopkins at, at 31 years old, what are some of the things that you've seen to make you believe that he can continue to play at, at a high level? Well, he's in great shape. I mean, he's got obviously the, the his exposure last year, um, you know, was good when he was when he was out there. Um, you know, confident in his ability to to win contested catches and, and win one on one and and be able to execute. You know, what we're asking our guys to execute on the outside. I've seen he's a guy, the one guy who stands next to you during the national anthem for every game. How close and how vital is your relationship with him? Well. Uh, he was one of those guys from from the onset five years ago. I don't know who I was. You know, maybe with the Bussin boys, I had a conversation. But he was one of those guys from the day that I got here. And and change in leadership is always can be difficult sometimes. And you know, KB's um, has been out there and, he, and has been available and and knows what to do and communicates to the extent where sometimes for growth of other players. We, we have to keep KB out of there so that he's not – so it forces other players to talk and to communicate. And, um, you know, just appreciate our personal relationship outside of football. You know I mean? He's raising a family and, and just really doing a lot of positive things in his his foundation work and, and what he does. And so, you know, again, we're, we're, we're lucky to have him. And, you know, obviously he's a great teammate. Been a captain here, obviously, since I've been here. Over the five years that you've been a coach, absolutely nobody outside of here is picking the Titans this season to be successful at all. I wonder how much you use that as motivation for your. Team. We're all undefeated right now, Jared. We're all undefeated, so we'll we'll see where this thing goes, and this journey that we take, these ups and the downs, and the our, we're focusing on today. You know, I mean, I, somebody told me that you can't be at two places at one time. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to give this team everything I got while I'm here. And, uh, and I'm going to ask the players and the coaches to do the same thing. And then we're going to try to prepare to win uh, each and every week. Did Luke Stalker, did he, did he earn a spot on your staff by what he did this offseason? <laughs> he, he did. And we've had numerous uh, coaches. And we've got some some really good coaches in here doing uh, working with the, the Bill Walsh minority uh, coaching internship. Uh, Luke was one that uh, – we decided to do for for the off season, you know, for the spring, and uh, he did a fantastic job. Um, it, it it just probably quicker than I would expect it. I didn't really have any expectations, 
but his ability to, to handle that QC work and to assist and, and, and function with the breakdown and a computer, not only be an asset on the field as, as a former player, but you know, I think that's the thing that that, reckon, that really stood out was his ability to, to be able to break down and, and help with those things um, on a QC level. Impressions of the team to win. Are there any one or two priorities you want to try to get accomplished here in the first couple of weeks of camp? Uh, I mean, just the normal install. I mean, I think that as we work our way through, you know, just being good in critical situations, making sure that, you know, you know, as we get to those things, these games are so tight and how you operate and function at the end of the half and, you know, at the end of the game, you know, those, those are always important. But, you know, more than half the game is played on first and second down. You know, 20% of it's played on third down, 20% of it's played on in the red zone. So, you know, everything is, is critical, um, you know, and making sure that the special teams are able to set the table to, to each one of those phases and each one of those situations. Uniforms coming out of mothballs. Looking sharp. Looking sharp. I used to used to root for the Browns back in the day, and so I remember those uh, Browns uniforms versus, versus the old Oilers. So um, I, I know that uh, we'll, we'll be excited to wear them. I hope we play well in them. Bud, Bud Phillips. Uh, we're, still, we're still talking about that. With, with Tim as coordinator, Tim used him in a slot a lot and, and I kind of diversified his portfolio. That here would require probably Traylon to move more. Are you comfortable with, with all the receivers in all the spots? Is Traylon more than I, I don't know today if – I don't know if everybody today is, is ready to do all that, Paul, but I think that there's times based on uh, personnel or call or formation that – that the guys can remember. We're, we're only going to give these guys as much as they can handle, and you know we'll, we're going to we'll start to introduce introduce that and, and putting them in different spots. And you know, formationally, you can do that based on who's the X, who's the Z, who's the F, and and moving guys around. So, based on the call that we have and, and who we want to try to you know put in that position, you know, I think that those things will we'll be able to do those things eventually. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.